welcome in our good friend uh james hammer the insiders hammer i'm down not out but i'm down where are you with did 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 last night's law I, I know you're not a fan whatever did last night's loss change your feelings about the sacramento kings team at all actually i i don't want to say it's a good loss but i think that there were good things in that loss that gives me some sort of hope for what the final 28, 29 games will look like. So like De'Aaron Fox, like whatever's going on with him, whatever has been going on with him for the last six weeks, I'm not sure. You know, we had the media uh, like sort of issue with him for a little while, but that wasn't even like a media driven thing. That was like, a, I don't know if it's a misunderstanding as much as it was just, a miscommunication and he like so we had that situation but whatever's caused him to like slip into this funk and not be the same player for six weeks i'm not sure what it was but to see him wake up out of that and to be try to will himself back into the game and try to you know it's almost like you have those those moments where you you leave a player who's struggling in in the fourth quarter of a blowout and you're you're waiting for them to catch it and all of a sudden they find their rhythm and it's like oh okay cool maybe that will carry over that's kind of the way i felt with fox like i don't at a certain point it was like win or lose i don't think that really matters the only thing that matters at this moment in time for the kings is that deer and fox finds himself and he seems to be finding himself in this game and if this is how he has to do it then okay that's fine Go ahead and do whatever you got to do. You don't need, he's going to get a week off here, but I'd rather have him find himself before the week off and not try to find himself coming out of the break. So yeah, I'm not as down on what happened last night as I think some fans are. Uh, you know, Demonis Sabonis was incredible. Malik Monk was incredible. Uh, you know that, you now know that Trey Lyles is so valuable that you you can't have him out for long stretches. Like those are those are issues that showed up last night. But I also look at the the Fox saying and go, okay, look, if if that's who he can be, part of that, yeah, part of who he can be in the second half, then the Kings got a shot. I'm with, okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. I mean, y'all are alone, man. Because I'm yeah, not. Yeah, I, 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 I think I think that's what I had asked for going into that game. Is I needed to see De'Aaron Fox step up, be a leader lead this team and be aggressive and he did that now he doesn't have to have 40 points all the time but it's his attacking mentality that we hadn't seen in a at least a couple of weeks maybe even more and i think if he can bring that the second half they're gonna win a good amount more games than they lose i think I think he's. I think De'Aaron Fox is the key to everything. Mm -hmm. I think if De'Aaron Fox is averaging twenty-eight to thirty points a game for the rest of like for the rest of the remaining twenty-nine games, they'll be a top sixteen. I th I think it's kind of that simple. We talk about Herder and Murray; they can play the same way, inconsistent at all. Mm -hmm. If De'Aaron is giving you that type of aggression and leadership, they'll get to the playoffs. But you got that last night, and they didn't even get a win. They're not going to win every game. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. I would also say, Dame, I get your point, but I would also say it's almost like that that thing where you're waiting for a team to learn how to win. That's what it just felt like. Whatever he was doing, it wasn't perfect. It, it wasn't. You know, he turned the ball over five or six times. Um, he took 31 shots, which is absolutely crazy for a regulation game. All of these things, like there were things in that loss that he did, he did not do well. And like you can point to and say, hey, look, you got to clean this up. You got to clean that up. But I think the overall like tenor of what we were seeing was the old Fox trying to find himself. And in that game where it's been a while since he's looked like that, I'm OK with him shooting too much. I'm OK with the mistakes just find yourself because you can fine tune that finding yourself over the next couple of games and you can, you know, he'll look better with a, with a week off to rest his body, especially after, uh, you know, the, a very not dirty player in, in Grayson Allen 
I don't know what <laughs> Reggie Miller was talking about. Like a guy without a <laughs> reputation as a dirty player, uh, clubbed him in the head and took him into the, into the, uh, the back uh, stanchion. But, um, yeah, I, I think this is what he needs. He needs to have a couple of games. And, like, look, it can't be just last night and tonight you score 13 and your team gets clubbed and you walk away thinking, okay, well, at least I got one under my belt. No, 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 no. Like, show us who you are. Because that's what, what this team, at this point, they need. They need somebody to show them how they're going to get to the playoffs. Because as of right now, I think they're a little rudderless. Hmm. Rudderless. Hmm. All right. Well... I'm outnumbered, so whatever. <laughs> so I mean, I well, I don't know if James, if you if you heard the whole uh, the show or what we were talking about earlier, but Damian thinks, and tell me if I'm wrong, but he thinks he does not see this team the way they are making the top six. I don't think that do I don't that think they're capable sell? of executing in a way that gets them to the top six. And I say I'm not closing the door on that yet. I think they have the talent. Um, they have the the top flight players uh, on the top of that roster. Uh, and I agree. And I agree with that. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree with that. I just don't agree with the, your belief that they can get it done. No, I mean, that's fair, Davian. Because, I mean, what would make you think that they can get it done? You can't just say, well, last season. Yeah, I have they a 50 have... some odd game sample size that makes me feel like – see it I don't you know it's, it's a magic trick but, now you see it now you don't so my but my 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 point my the way i would look at that is it'd be one thing if they were battling up if they were in this spot for the entire season it's like they're not going to be able to get over the hump like if they were in eighth seventh eighth for the entire season like they don't have enough to get back up there they were just there like three games ago and three games from now they might be right back up there and that would that honestly is more so what this season has been as opposed to them completely falling off to the point where they're they're out of contention for six. Mm -hmm. the, the the story of this season is three games after the all-star break, they'll probably be sixth. And then four games after that, they'll probably be seventh. And then they'll go back up to six. Like that's probably what's gonna happen. Where that pinch or they could be ends, tense. That's the that's that has, the problem. But that hasn't mm -hmm. happened. If we're if we're going off of what they've shown us this year, that hasn't happened this year. What they've shown us this year is they'll be they'll win seven out of three and then they'll lose four out of five, mm -hmm. and that's not going to get you down to tenth. That's going to keep you around where you've been at. If we're using the metric of what they've shown us this season, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, like, look, at, they're kind of they got to a certain point they plateaued. They needed to push to give them over the the top. And that push was, you know, trading for a guy that you waived in cash considerations. You didn't mix it up. You didn't give them the jolt of energy that they probably needed. And now you got to create it yourself. And I think that's what I believe the De'Aaron Fox game was. Like him creating the energy again to try to get back to who he should be. And, you know, I, I don't know if he can sustain it. But we have seen him sustain it for a second half of the season going into the playoffs. I just don't like that we have this question mark about what's going on for six weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. I mean, he's like before last night, he was averaging like 21 and a half a game since the calendar turned to 2024. Mm -hmm. And that just he's too good to average that. And it's not like he was taking a step back so others could take. No, he just wasn't playing well, like straight up. He. His three point percentage was around 33%. His shot, uh, his overall field goal percent was at 43 point something, down five or 6% or 8% off of what he shot last year. He just wasn't playing well. So, whatever is going on, he needs to move past that and, and get, um, you know, this is a group that you're, you're going to fight with the rest of the season. That's it. So, make the best of it and let's see what happens. And, um, maybe this summer they'll go get the big help that the that some of these guys need. But I think it it really does. We always say it begins and ends with De'Aaron Fox. I don't think we could he could have showed us more of that. Like realistically, he just proved it. It begins and ends with him. And that's how this entire season has been. When he's great, they're tough to beat. When he's not, 
they're they're extremely beatable. And when he doesn't like when he's turned off, like the switch isn't hit at all, they lose to bad teams. And that's what we've seen all season. And James, if 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 the success of the Sacramento Kings begins or success or failures begins with and ends with De'Aaron Fox, I'm of the belief that this trade market begins and ends with Kevin Herter. I have a theory that Mike Brown hates Kevin Herter. Not Kevin Herter the person, Kevin Herter the basketball player. And I feel like what we saw last night just was a kind of a microcosm of what really has been happening. Uh, the season between these two, maybe not as outward as that little exchange that they had last night, but just Mike is frustrated with something Kevin Herter does on the basketball floor and he's sick of it. And that's what we saw last night. And, you know, Kenny made a great, he can't be sick of it. There's no better option. He's these two have to figure out for, for Sacramento to get to top six or to get anywhere. Those two, those two, those, yes, it starts and ends with here. No doubt. Those two, they've got to figure out their issues. It's Valentine's Day. Make love work here. You, you've got to figure out your issues so you guys can move on through these next 29 games, hopefully 29 games plus together. Yeah, we had someone in the chat earlier um, during the Insiders that said something to the effect that, you know, Mike Brown makes, his, makes uh, some of these guys afraid to shoot, right? And that just couldn't be further from the mm -hmm. truth. Like Mike Brown is, is told all of these guys, shoot, shoot, shoot. He, I have never seen him yell at a player for taking a shot ever that I can remember. The only thing I can remember is him yelling at, uh, at Keegan Murray for not taking a shot. Like the offensive side of the ball, they do a lot of empowering with every single player that steps on the court, whether it's, you know, De'Aaron Fox and Kevin Herter and Malik Monk, or it's, uh, you know, Keon Ellis and, and Kessler Edwards, the, the general consensus is, look, if you're going to step on the court, you've got to do the job that the guy that you stepped off that you're, you're playing for does, which means you got to space the floor. You got to take the shot when it's in your hands. You got to do all of these things that are very basic. We're not asking you to go out there and be Michael Jordan or go out there and be Kyrie Irving and try to take everybody off the dribble. We're asking you to take the open shot. And for the most part, please hit it if you can, but just take it because that's all right. But on the defensive side of the ball, Mike can't deal with the, the frustrating errors. And I think it's really interesting. Like one of the hallmarks of last season was Mike Brown calling a timeout 40 seconds into a game. And we're like, what in the world are you doing this year? That's shifted. He doesn't do that at all. Like, I don't even know what happened to that. Because I thought it worked like more often than not. It was like, hey, no, 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 that's not who we are tonight. That's not what we're doing tonight. Now it's the like what he's known for is the really, really bad uh, coaching challenges. Right. But when it comes to the defensive side of the ball, they have such basic principles. And if you don't follow the basic principles and you you slip into these these really easy mistakes, he's going to call you out on it. And, and I get, I get it that it was Kevin this time, but the last time they played the Suns, the entire focus after the fact was on the fact that they didn't defend the three point line late in the game, that when the Suns went small ball, that, uh, that the Kings kept dropping back too far and, and acting like they were defending a regular team, but realistically they're defending five guards. And so they just kept going in scramble mode and giving up these open threes. That's what happened in this game again. And so I'm assuming that what Mike was angry with, which I'd have to go back and watch the whole tape, is that Kevin Herter kept doing exactly what they did last game that cost him the game. And that's really frustrating as a coach. If you're going to go into a contest against a very specific team that you know exactly how they beat you last time, and we've got a, a game plan to stop that, and then you start giving up those same exact things, it's got to kill you as a coach. And so that's what I think happened with Kevin. Again, I've got to go back and watch the tape and see the exactly all of it. That was the third, yeah, that was the third, fourth quarter stretch yeah. where they hit those threes that eliminated the Kings uh, lead. And then they, they took a lead of their own. So that, yeah. So, so it was, and he called the, 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 the it, it was, it was clearly something on the defensive end that he was pissed off about. So, yeah. Just looking at the play, there's a screen at the top of the key. Uh, first of all, the the first three, 
Kevin's guarding the ball. And I don't know whose decision it was to go double. That was an asinine decision, if you ask me. I don't know if it was Mike. I don't know if it was one of the players. But Kevin's guarding the ball. He's guarding Kevin Durant. Harrison leaves Royce O'Neal for no real reason to go double Kevin Durant, who's looking right at him. And Kevin passes to Royce O'Neal. Royce O'Neal passes to Eric Gordon. There's a three. That's your first one. The second one, Kevin uh, Herter is guarding KD again. There's a screen and roll. Kevin doesn't fight through the pick or whatever. And Harrison is playing this, or excuse me, um, Herter's guarding Royce O'Neal. There's Kevin Durant is being guarded by Harrison Barnes. KD sets the screen. Herter goes under and just kind of fades and looks for a switch. Harrison does whatever he does, leaves Royce O'Neal wide open. That's the three. Mike Brown's clearly upset with Kevin. Kevin didn't do his job, Kevin Herter. And it feels like if I'm Kevin Herter, if I'm Kevin Herter, what I think the argument would have been was, all right, number one, I got our signals crossed, but it's not okay to just let this guy shoot a walk-up three. Look at the play. I have no idea what Harrison Barnes is doing and how that's okay. That I, I don't know what defense that is. Even if Kevin is supposed to um is supposed to like fight through that and stay with Royce O'Neal. Harrison Barnes going from the three point line to the free throw line as a defender, that that's not that that's nobody's strategy. Like what the hell was that? And Kevin is probably like, well, what the hell was that? What was he doing? And to your point earlier, Kevin's always the one getting yelled yeah, at in those situations. That's right. I can't imagine whatever Harrison was doing on that play. I just watched it twice. I can't imagine that's the plan, whatever Harrison was doing. That is not what Mike Brown teaches or anybody else. And But Kevin Herter is the one that gets yelled at. And Kevin probably had enough and was like, well, go talk to him. What is he doing? And I think there's a disconnect there. They need to get on the same page one way or another. And we'll see. We'll see if that ever happens. That's part of like what you talk about. Some of the things they need to do to become a top six team, like talking to each other, like having these hard conversations and meeting in the middle and coming together. I don't know if they will. Mm. I don't know. When I say I don't agree with you, it's not to say you might not be right. Mm. Like what you say might actually be the case. They may not have enough. I just think they can overcome that, but there's no guarantee. We'll see. Yeah. Well, that, and I'll tell you the, I mean, like what it looked like to me real specifically last night was the idea was to send a second body at both Kevin Durant when he was at the top and Devin Booker when he was at the top and get the ball out of their hands. And if you're going to lose with a Royce O'Neal three who's shooting like who what who hadn't been shooting well at all coming in like over a stretch, um, if it's going to be Josh Akogi that beats you if it's going to be even at this point, Grayson Allen that beats you, then that's who it's going to be. You're not going to get beat by Kevin Durant and by, uh, again, Devin Booker hitting a, hitting a top of the key, uh, open jumper or breaking you down and creating something at the basket for someone else. That's so I do think that that was part of it. The problem that you have, Kenny, is that, I mean, just look at the numbers, like every single one of those guys hit a three that mattered. So you look at Grayson Allen goes two for five and Royce O'Neal goes two for five and Josh Akogi goes one for one. And then the other one was Nasir Little. So you have these four guys who are not like known as great. They're not what Mike likes to call hot shooters. Grayson Allen, yes, but the other guys are not what you call hot shooters. And when Grayson is on the floor with like three other stars, then of course he's not going to be someone that you pay a lot of attention to. The the difference is, is that the Kings got nothing out of the guys that they had in those situations. So they didn't even take any shots. Your Keon Ellis, your Kessler Edwards, your, uh, your Davion Mitchell, Davion Mitchell goes one for three, but Keon Ellis, Alex Lynn, Kessler Edwards, they didn't even take a shot when they were in the game. And you, you also look at, you know, Keegan Murray, Harrison Barnes. Those are hot shooters. Those are, those are like the, the, like, 
guys that you key on that you don't allow wide open threes if you're the opposition, they combine to go one of six. You know, and it's not even the the one of six that's the problem. It's the six that's the problem. Mm. Like those guys needed to shoot more threes. And while you got these other guys for the other teams that are marginal three-point shooters impacting the win and loss, the Kings other guys didn't at all. And that's that's where you, number one, I, I think Fox maybe could have pulled back a little bit. But again, I'm okay with him trying to go get his in one game. But it's also where everyone else has to be more conscious of what the offensive is, uh, what the offense is, and how open some of these guys are, and how you know it just can't be one guy every time. And so uh, again, I, I think that the the Suns they did a really nice job of making the Kings scramble, and then the guys that you wanted shooting shots, they hit them. That's it, and you, you lose by a couple of points, and it's because you just take away, start taking away one or two of those those wide open threes that you gave the, uh, the non, you know, hot shooters for them, you win the game, but they didn't miss. Yeah. You said there were some, um, positives from, uh, last night's game. James is, you know, positives in the loss. Are you, where's your confidence level in this team moving forward? Um, I don't know. I mean, they've got to get through this stretch of games. It's not easy. Uh, you know, again, like tonight on the second night of a back to back, you can't mail this in. You need to go in there and and fight like crazy and and try to come away with a win. Um, but then coming out of the break, you know, you have the Spurs and then you've you've got more of the same. It's like the Clippers, Timberwolves, and and Denver again. After that, you get to early March. There's a, a group of like 10 winnable games. And that's where the Kings, if they're going to make it. That's where they've got to put their foot down and say, this is who we are and this is where we're going. And if they don't, if they don't go something like eight and two in that stretch, they're not, they're not going to be, they might be, a, they're going to be a play-in team, but they're not going to be a, a playoff team. I don't think. And we're already gotten, we've already gotten to the point where even if they win all, they, they do the exact same thing they did last year. They go 16 and nine to finish the season, right? that still puts them at like 46 wins that to me is like a, in this season, a seven or an eight seed in the West, which means you're a playing team. And I, I don't think we're going to see a collapse from all of these teams. I mean, I still, you know, there, there still could come a point where either the Lakers lose one of their two stars or the Warriors lose Steph Curry for a stretch of games like they do every year, or the Pelicans get hurt like they do every year or KD, um, so there's always an opportunity that one of these other teams has a major injury issue that allows you to sneak through, but like, I'm not putting my, my money up on them being like a fourth seed or a fifth seed or tracking. I know, I don't think they're going to track down the top tier group. I don't know that they can climb to the top of this group either at this point. Yeah. I, I don't know. There, there are definitely question marks with this team and, you know, it feels like I've said it at least uh, a couple of different times, but it feels like a fork in the road. It feels like a, a crossroads moment for this team. Where are they going to go? They're, now we're at the all-star break. And how you come out of the all-star break, you know, the first couple of weeks may dictate where you end up eventually, you know, fighting in the play-in or, you know, it's not comfortable, but in a in a playoff series, comfortably in a playoff series. Mm-hmm. Um We'll see what these guys got, man. We'll, we'll, we'll see what they got. Well, the good thing uh, about, you know, the, the Kings, is you said some unanswered questions. It's not like New Orleans questions are answered. Right. Or Phoenix's questions are answered. Yeah. Like Phoenix got dealt, you know, another question mark last night. Mm-hmm. We, we don't know how long Bradley Beal will be out, if he'll be out any length of time uh, at all. But he was, was playing really well mm-hmm. and was part of why Phoenix was playing really well. But that's. That's that's part of the that's part of what Phoenix is this year. Like I don't all is not well with Phoenix. Uh and I'm leaving one team out. Oh, Dallas. Dallas. I think there's still some question marks about Dallas in in Tons Sacramento, of. you know, trying to take the positive approach here for the first time in 3 hours and 23 <laughs> minutes. Sacramento has a lot of control over what happens with Dallas. And, and real quick to your point what we talked about earlier. Uh New Orleans I'll I'll hesitate a little bit with them, but Dallas and Phoenix they don't play defense just like the Kings. Mm-hmm. So if we're worried about like 
man, it's going to be hard to they'll, – they'll give opportunities. They'll have those games where they can't stop anybody. And if you play them again, I think they play Dallas twice. you got an opportunity at your house to put up points and beat them and win that season series. Yeah. I mean, Dallas is a team that, like, again, the Kings haven't had a lot of problems with. And actually, before last night, you could have said sort of the same thing about Phoenix. The Kings, you know, very well could have been 3-0 and against Phoenix coming into that game. Um, and then, Kings have played like, really well against Phoenix every time they've played. Obviously, they won two of them. They played really well for 41 minutes last time, and they didn't play bad last night. You can say the same about uh, Denver. They played – I mean, they, they're 2-0 and against Denver. They played Dem Denver really, really well. Um, Denver hasn't had their full, full arsenal at, at any time against them. It's not our but, problem. Uh, but you look at – yeah, you look around, there's, you know, the Clippers and and the Pelicans who just crush the Kings every time they play them. But, you know, you're you split against Minnesota already. Um, well, you're what one and one and one against Minnesota, like uh, you're two and one against OKC. Like most of the other teams around you, you've played really well. You're two and oh against the Lakers. You split with the, the Warriors. There is a lot of positives here, especially when it comes to tiebreakers and stuff uh, later on in the season. but kind of go back to what Mike Brown always says and what mo most coaches say. It doesn't really matter what the other teams are doing. It The only thing that really matters is if the Kings can get right themselves, because that's the biggest problem right now. It, it's not who they're playing or anything else. It's that they just aren't a hundred percent who they should be. And, you know, again, you lose a game the, to me last night was a totally respectful, respectable loss. That's a, that's a good team. It's a good team in your tier that's right around with superstars that got hot and hit shots and you lost by a couple of points. You know, it's the Charlotte loss. It's the Detroit loss. Those are home losses. You know, it's the, the Blazers loss. It's the two losses to Houston. There's all of these other games where you just point to and say, okay, like you don't have a margin of error because of that. Like if you take out like four of those other losses that they shouldn't have had, you know, this team is all of a sudden sitting there, you know, playing tonight against Denver, battling out who's going to be like the the third or fourth spot in the West. I, I just don't know that we've seen the inconsistencies of this team all year long, and I don't know how they fix it. And I don't know if they can fix it in a week off. Well, we'll uh, talk more about Kings basketball. We'll talk more about the Sacramento Kings and the Denver Nuggets coming up tonight with uh, James Hamm of the Insiders. When Dilo and Casey return here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. Elite defense by the Nassus. Oh, my God. The Nassus is, is phenomenal. Mm. It's about five feet away from the hall, and he's got his hands up. That is incredible. Wild. The Nassus is incredible. Hey, I I am not ham. Um, the Kings don't turn the ball over too much. They Last night, they turned the ball over 13 times, and they had way more fast break points than the other team. They had all kinds of other points, like way more second chance points than the other team. Um, and right now they rank 16th in the NBA, at like 13 and a half. Can they're like middle of the road. They're middle of the road in turnovers, but they're also number four in assists per game at 28.8 per game. Like if you were to say, Hey, the Kings don't block shots. I'd be like, yeah, the Kings don't block shots. You're right. They're 29th in the league, but just saying. It feels like the Kings just turn the ball over at the wrong time. Sometimes that's probably why people think they turn it over too much. Yeah. Well, and in their losses, they turn the ball over too much. But in their wins, like there are plenty of games this season where they've just been really, really, really good with the ball. So like middle of the road in, in the NBA when you play one of the fastest paces and, you know, you're, you're ninth in pace and uh, and you're fourth in assists. Like, look, if you're a pass happy team, there's a good chance you're going to turn the ball over here and there. They, I can't um, look it up. They just got it. They got to, and I don't know if they can. I don't know if they can. They just need to button things up. They button things up, make, be better at the free throw line, have those games where they don't turn the ball over. Feels like yeah. that's, worth, that's worth five wins alone, but. 
We'll see if they can do it. They might not be able to do it. Yeah, here's a funny stat. They actually turned the ball over more in their wins, 13.2 to 12.3 in their losses. Be sloppy. <laughs> they also they shoot the exact same percentage from three, 40%. Oh, no, those are 40% attempts. Um, no, they shoot way better. Their field goal percent. Their problem is when they lose, for the most part, they're averaging 125.7 points per game in their wins and 109.6 in their losses. That's not great. And they're shooting 40% in their wins from three and 33% in their losses. And that stupid free throw number, 74.6 in their wins and 71.2 in their losses. Mm. Yeah. They also don't play defense in their losses. That's always a... I find that hard to believe, James. You don't believe it, don't, do you? I do not. Yeah. <laughs> find that hard to believe. Yeah. Oh, man. It's weird. It's just like expectations. It's not even that they aren't living up to expectations. It's that they're finding new ways to, like, shake your confidence. That offensive rebound last night was tough. Well, the the, the offensive rebound in a back-to-back -back play with the – almost never called out of bounds foul was incredible. Oh yeah. Absolutely and, incredible. Like that, like this is how they're going to lose. Sabonis. At, like, I this? know he took that hard. I mean, you have 18 rebounds and you don't leave your feet to go get the 19th. And that just to me, it wasn't even that the ball flew over the top of him as much as it was. He didn't go all the way up because he, he thought he boxed out. Yeah. I do not want to, uh, Bryce, I do not want to be the defensive coordinator for the Niners because I like to sit in the booth when I am a dis defensive coordinator. I don't like to be on the sidelines. Can't do that, get it done. Can't do that, James. But I would have fired him. I got to be honest. Like, I think that was the right move. I don't know. Complained all season long that their defensive line couldn't get to a quarterback. That doesn't make any sense. You had too much talent. How can you not get to the quarterback? And be the defensive line coach issue, Caseric. Well, you're a defensive coordinator, man. Like you, you gotta sit there you, and you got a trillion dollar defensive line. There should be no scheme needed. Well, <laughs> they proved that you needed a scheme, and they and they also proved that you didn't have the scheme in your back pocket. No, James. Yeah. <laughs> they fit. I ain't gonna do it. James is here. I, I man, more Texas hey. highlights. No, bro. Oh. Thoughts to the people in Kansas City, though. Oh. This country's so broken, man. It ain't never gonna get fixed. Oh. This country's never gonna get fixed, and it's gonna get way worse over the course of the like next eight months. Yeah, it's laughable. It's just awful. This this the stuff that's coming out of Kansas City is just absolutely awful. Um. James Ham with us. We continued the conversation during the commercial break about the Sacramento Kings and how, how they can turn things around, why they can't turn turn things around, what things are 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 are, are, are wrong, what things can be fixed. Um, James, do you think? Let's go with a scenario. Let's go with a negative scenario. I don't think they're falling out of the top ten. Like I think that's a that's a that's a drastic fall off that I'm not even like prepared for. That's but, a great word. I'm <laughs> prepared for that. that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um if they lose in the play in and don't play a series, do you think that changes or heightens anything? Because you've already been vocal about the offseason Monty McNair needs to have. Do you think not playing in a playoff series uh, heightens that in any sort of way for this front office and this team? Oh, it makes its own new nightmare. Mm. I mean, it does. I mean, if this team doesn't make the playoffs, like, I don't know if everyone's going to have a job at uh, come summertime. Like, and I'll just point out this crappy thing that would happen. That means that you don't give up your 2024 first round pick yeah. if you don't make the playoffs. Yeah, And that means you're going to have like the 14th pick or the 13th pick and a bad draft that nobody really wants one of these picks. 
And it also means that your 25, 26, and 27 first round picks are now not just wide open. There you you go from having four if they do make the playoffs and that the 2024 pick conveys on July 1st, they have four first round picks that they can offer in a trade. They've got three pick swaps on top of that, or they've got seven pick swaps, like whatever, however you want to look at that grouping of first round picks from 2025 to 2031, they're all wide open. If you don't make the playoffs, you keep your 2024 and now you, you might have to give up your 2025 or your 2026, which means you can't also trade your 2027. And we go right back to where they are today with their draft picks um, with just a little bit more leeway because you can go out to 2031. So the best you could do is offer a protected with an asterisk 2027 first round pick uh, at 2029 and 2031. So again, like it could really hurt who they are and what they want to do moving forward if they don't make the playoffs, not just because um, there's going to be a lot of noise from behind the scenes about how this happened and what is the postmortem on them missing the playoffs this year and why didn't they make more of a move during the offseason? Why didn't they make more of a move during free agency? Uh, I mean, during uh, during trade deadline, like those are all going to be like really, really legitimate questions that someone's going to have to answer. And uh, as of right now, again, like we talked about it, maintain and improve. Like we got to maintain, where is the improve? And there has been a conscious decision to move forward this way. And that means that whoever made that decision, you're, you're going to have to answer for it. Um, Yeah. So I think there is a big deal um, with what happens right now. And it's not just, you know, oh, the fans are going to be really upset. Man, you, does anyone out there know how much the Kings jacked up their ticket prices because they made the playoffs one time? Like all these fans have waited for years and years and years, you know, showing up for a bad team. This team wins one time. They make the playoffs one time and lose in the first round, and they just nitroed their their first their uh, their season ticket packages. So, what are you going to give it back? You're not going to. So again, you got to put a product on the floor and. Sometimes that means you got to make hard decisions. You got to you can bite the bullet and make a trade when it maybe isn't all that comfortable and they didn't do it. And so now you're in a situation where look if this team fails in the second half, that there's going to be someone who pays for that failure. Hmm. I don't know who that is. What James is saying is it's going to be you. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that I'm not I'm not saying they're going to fire the GM or, or whatever, but there's going to be an angry owner if they don't make the playoffs this season. And I, like, where are you going to point the fingers? Like, I, I don't know. As he, as he should be angry in, in this situation. It, everybody should be angry if they don't make the playoffs. But um, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I mean, is I, I would definitely listen to you if we say some, you know, uh, some some heads are going to roll if they don't make the playoffs. But I also think that would be the wrong move. You know what I mean? Like, it's you you. You don't get anywhere by just drastically changing things all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. um I think I think that everybody should be out there with it. you the people that you have in place to make decisions, to coach this team and to play on the court. I would the way I would have gone about it when I've got any of these guys is they're self motivated to be great. They don't need to be motivated with their job on the line to, to be better. If that's the, the motivation you need for these people that you have in these positions, you're probably not going to win because you can't have everybody's job on the line every time. So I hear what you're saying. I hope that's not the case. I really hope we don't find out <laughs> You know what I'm saying what that would look like. But uh, this whole thing is supposed to, it, it was supposed to be about building something. And sometimes when you build something, you don't make a straight line up to where you're trying to go. There are setbacks. And if there are setbacks, how they deal with them, uh, I hope they deal with them the right way. Yeah. And, okay, so I'm going to stick with the building mentality there, right? So the thing about building is, sure, you know, you can have, you can get part of a house done and it starts raining and you got to wait. 
right? And you got to hope that there isn't too much damage done and all that stuff. But if we get to an off season where they didn't make the playoffs, doesn't that feel like like you started building a house, but like you didn't do enough on the foundation and like the whole back corner of the foundation broke and fell off. And now y- you can't just like go in and repair that. Well, you got to tear back and you like, you got to make a pretty substantial like adjustment to what your plans are and how you're going to build the house moving forward. Mm-hmm. So that's where I'm at. Like, like this isn't about, you know, again, I, I would even say that at this point they haven't maintained. I don't care what the record is. This team is not as good as they were last year. It's straight up. They're not. They're not as resilient. They don't have the same mentality. Uh, they don't bring the same energy and effort. Why do you think, that is? Night. Why do you think that is? You got me. Like mm-hmm. I, you know, like I, I once, uh, I once had somebody while I was sitting in front of them. They asked Paul Westfall about like trying to control momentum, and. I remember Paul said, man, if I knew how to control momentum, I wouldn't use it to be a basketball coach. (laughs) There's a lot of things in this world that you could use momentum for and make a whole lot of money doing. It wouldn't be doing being a basketball coach. Like if that's where, like if there, anyone knows how to control momentum, positive momentum, negative momentum, like you should be doing like great things. And that's where I kind of like with this team, I, I can't tell you what it is, but they've lost a little bit of who they were. And it's, it's right now it's that battle to, can you find who you were? And, and that even like who they were, we were hoping they were going to maintain and improve off of that. Mm -hmm. Right. That's so we're still trying to get back to like realistically who they were. And after that, um, you gotta, you know, again, we even heard it with Mike Brown and, and, you know, Mike, Mike has been the defensive guy all year long, trying to push, push, push on the, on the defensive end. And then after the the trade deadline, we hear Monty McNair talk about how the offense isn't good enough. And it was like, okay, well, like we got to be on the same page moving forward here. Because if your coach is asking for defensive players to improve a defense that he doesn't think can hold up in the playoffs, and you think that you've got enough offensive weapons to outscore everybody. And so you're not going to make a move then those two aren't on the same page moving forward and you got to figure something else out. That's, that's not like a cohesive unit moving forward. Mm-hmm. And so I, I don't know that that's totally the case that, that they're just like, it's a battle of wills, but I certainly would say like when your GM is saying one thing and your coach is talking about defense there, you know, you got to figure it out. Yeah. I don't know how you do it then. Maybe these two, maybe those two aren't exactly on the same page. I'm not yeah. sure. I don't um, know. I, I, and I'm not saying that. Like, I just no, know. I mean, something for some reason, their offense is off. And maybe that's something that Monty and, and Mike can't pinpoint. You know, I mean, obviously, they're a lot closer to the team than we are. But, you know, we're, you see the same guys out there for the most part. Domas is having a phenomenal season. Lost in all this. Man had a 30-some-odd point triple-double last night. 50th triple-double of his career. What are, what are we up to, James? 16th or 17th of the season? 18th. 18th, 18th of the season. Three in a row. Oh. Five in the last six. Ten in the last 15. 30-some-odd consecutive double-double. Like, dude is having a phenomenal season. And it's getting lost by deficiencies on the offensive end in other places. Uh, the ups and downs a little bit of, of De'Aaron Fox, the strange stretch that, that Keegan Murray is having, uh, the disappearing act of Harrison Barnes through 40 games, the reemergence, uh, a, a, you know, f- for, for a 10 game stretch. And now the, now he's like right in between. He's, he's <laughs> right between, Oh my God, Harrison Barnes. And Oh my God, Harrison Barnes. He's like right in the middle. And then Herder, who's just, up and down. And and Malik is phenomenal right now. Yeah. This team wins some games. That dude could be six man of the year. But I mean, that's what it looked like last night. He just went out and auditioned for six man of the year. I he was so good. He wasn't auditioning for a six man of the year. He was auditioning for how much money teams. is this league willing to pay me? Yeah. How much how much money is this league willing to pay me? I know what Sacramento can pay me. What's the rest of this league going to be willing to pay me? 
Well, and I don't know the answer to that, to be honest. Like, I really don't. Every every time he has a big game, oh my gosh, he's we're not going to be able to afford him. I say, like, all right. Well, what does the rest of the league think of what what Malik's doing? Though that the rest of the league has decided defense is not a thing they're going to do anymore. Maybe, maybe, maybe Malik's twenty points in this upscale NBA offense. Maybe that's what they want. Maybe so. Maybe, like what, what it really comes down to um, with with all of this is, in my opinion, is winning. Yeah. And winning cures all. Mm-hmm. You know, and the vibes will be right back. Uh, to how we had them last year, if they can start winning some games and win games on a consistent basis and stay there. Um, will they be able to do it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll we'll see. We'll see. But I think the – I keep saying, I think the the pieces are there. I do think the pieces are there. They just got to dig deep, you know. They got to dig deep and, and figure out uh, who they are and who they want to be. And we'll see what they got, man. Yeah. And that Detroit game was a killer, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, that was the ultimate that vibe. Was a gut punch. Killer. Yeah. yeah, because even if you if you win that game, then it's okay to lose to the Suns. It, it's okay to lose to OKC. And it would even be okay to do like these three in a row. But if you would have won that, you would have been what six and two. Then you go on to win the next one seven and two over a nine game stretch. If you have a little bit of a slip up right before the deadline, uh, right before the the All Star break, but it's against three really good teams, okay, no big deal. But that you throw that de- uh, Detroit loss in there, and it just magnifies everything. And that's why, again, the margin of, of error for this team is nothing at this point. Yeah, and you just start looking through the schedule and starting to find like heightened importance. And we keep pointing to those two games against Dallas, how big those will be. Those games, I mean, that game's this is a month away. Mm-hmm. We're already looking at those coming out strong against San Antonio on the 22nd, uh, hoping to set the tone, you know, for what they could do moving forward. And then you still, you, you know, I, I didn't realize, I knew there was one left. I didn't realize till KC pointed it out. The Phoenix game's the last game of the season. That probably isn't going to have as much emphasis on it as it would have if it had taken place like four weeks earlier mm-hmm. where winning this series might not matter by the time you get to the last game of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or it could matter for everything. Well, it could. Yeah. 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 And there's a flip for side sure. to that. The, yeah. Um, shout out flip side. Yes, it is. Uh, but so, so you look at it like this, shout out to Kamara. He sent us um, a text saying they got to go 18 and 11 to finish with the same record that they had last year. Okay. Hmm. Looking at the schedule, the easiest opponent's toughest was or whatever. One with Washington, two with San Antonio, one with Portland, one with Memphis, one with Toronto, one with Brooklyn. That's one, two, three, four, seven. six, seven. Seven and oh there. Seven and oh there means you got to go. Awfully, it's awfully kind on your part. For a I team mean, that lost to Detroit last week. I'm just okay. saying. Yeah, but I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm. I'm telling you, this is what they have to do. Okay. Not what they're going. To. I hear you. All right. This is what you have to do. No. Yep. Even if you, even if like in a season, you can. Even if in a season you get two or three where you trip up against teams like that, they've wasted that. Yeah. All right. So they've. They, you don't get any more. Yeah, you don't get no more. You go seven and zero there. That means you've got to go for the rest of your schedule that has quote unquote tough teams, mid teams, or whatever. What's that? Uh, what's my math looking at? Eleven and eleven. Yeah, because you had them seven and yeah. 0, 18 and eleven. Yeah, eleven and eleven. Five hundred outside of the ba- the bad teams. But that gets you. So th- that gets th- you where you at, which probably gets you six. So I was going to say the follow up question is, what does that get you in the standings? Think, what does last year get you in the standings? I think that gets you six. Forty eight hmm. gets you six this year. It okay. might not, but Phoenix I think- is up in like someone has to play different, right? And that's right. what we were talking about with Sacramento. Sacramento's got to, they got to up it a little bit. 18 and 11 really isn't upping it. They're seven it's games the over 500 right now. It's doing. the same, it's the same yeah. thing. Um, of course, it, at this point in the season now, Phoenix could play the same. New Orleans could play the same. Like if those teams all play the same, the Kings are eighth, mm-hmm. right? Dallas play the same. Um, that's probably not happening for all four of those teams. Right. Uh, who's going to take advantage? You know, Dallas is they're they're working with their new lineups. They're cooking for sure. Phoenix will remain a question mark to me. 
all year. They have the toughest schedule in the league. In New Orleans, I just, I got to, I don't, I don't, I don't understand New Orleans at all. I I don't, I don't know. I can't describe that basketball team. No. I think New Orleans could be potentially good. They lost Dyson. I think they could too. Like, I I don't understand why New Orleans isn't better. Right. That's the crazy thing, especially the way we see them against Sacramento. And then you look up and they're just a game better than them. You would think the way that we've seen them play, like, man, that's probably a team that's five games better than Sacramento. But yeah. for whatever reason, they got 20-something losses themselves. And they also, they haven't been hit fully by the injury bug. They just lost Tyson Daniels. You could see them easily having more. I, I guess Alvarado's been hurt uh, on and off throughout the season, but you could definitely see them having more injury issues between now and the end of the season because that's who they've been forever. And, I mean, if they stay healthy, I, I would be surprised if they didn't at least, like, trend up to, like, the 46 to 48 wins that we're talking about. And I looked at, I think, I've got the Kings at right around like 11 games against what you consider sort of non-playoff teams. And that's a lot like and they, if they take care of those games and then the games that you, you know, the tough games that you got to split, if you, if you can come away like 500 um, with the rest of the games, you got a shot. The, so. the, the other thing um, about the Kings in the second half is they just went through Basically, a pretty tough month and a half, two month schedule where they were barely ever at home. Yeah, that's going to change. Yeah, in the second half, they're going to be home. A it's bunch pretty glaring in in a good amount in April, and they're what is it, fifteen and nine at home? Yeah, look at the other home records for the teams in the Western Con. There's a, they, it's like there's there's, <laughs> it feels like some teams might have played all their home games already, right, right. and then you've got Sacramento. Yeah, they've got eleven home games in March. Who have been here twice since Christmas? Yeah, like they have that. eleven home games in March and four and four in uh, in April. So I think it's eleven home games and four road games in, hey, in March. Got to cook at G one C. Got to starting got to. with HBCU night. That's tough. James. Where are you going to be HBCU night? <laughs> with the Deltas. <laughs> have you picked a fraternity the for the twenty second, James? We're getting James to that. With the James, we're getting to that game early. James, gonna need you to pick a fraternity. Be- uh, what I'm not doing is I'm not wearing uh, Jason Jones's uh, yellow and purple. Oh, like, oh, yeah, oh. Yeah. With the no, I'm, I'm not wearing his Laker colors out there for my fraternity no. choice. Good idea. This, that ain't happening. Um, uh, yeah, well, right color choices is important. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for yep. sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah, <laughs> James. Go, James is hyped. James is as hyped as we are for HBC. Oh, you know he is, man. See, you David, the Doctor David, I got you, Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. Yeah. <laughs> so, I believe that's a Revenge of the Nerds reference. Yes. Very good. Uh, okay. school good things reference. I know that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a Revenge <laughs> of the Nerds reference. Yeah. So, uh, uh, buckle up. Yeah. Buckle up. I mean, we talking like we're gonna do this all again tomorrow. That's what I'm saying. Buckle we're up. We're gonna do this all again tomorrow. I think we all like. Well, I don't know. I forgot about injuries, but like, we feel like they're not winning tonight, huh? Everybody. I, I don't know. It's just hard. Like, I don't know. I'd be. Surprised. I don't know. I'd be a little. I'm not gonna say. Yeah, they ain't winning. They're gonna be. I'd Denver be a little. Again. I'd be a little surprised if they won tonight. It'll be Denver again. I'd perk up my seat. Like, oh, however, you know. Maybe Denver just wants to get to the break too. Yeah. It's not like Denver's, you know, incapable of just wanting to chill. Right. And they're potentially no Murray, no KCP. And they're they're at home. Mm-hmm. They ain't gotta go nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. They, they might, also they've added uh Julian uh, Strather to their injury list um uh, as questionable with the left ankle sprain. And uh Trey Lyles is still questionable. Yeah, I don't like that. I heard uh, Marcus Burton might be available, make his Kings debut tonight. I read that. Oh, uh, the guy, the two way guy they signed. He's not been elevated, I think. Dion, uh, I think it was uh, Jay who had that. Who is it? Like, no, what's his name? No. Uh, Marcus Jones, right? Oh, Marcus Jones. What did I say? Burton? I'm thinking DeAndre Burton. Uh, yeah, it is Marcus. Deontay Burton. Yeah, it's not Deontay Burton. What? Uh, it's, 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 Marcus Jones. Jones. Yeah. I don't think it's Marcus. That is the last name. This is good. This is this is no. This is fantastic. We're we're talking about a player. We can't get his name right. Hey, make sure you guys oh. turn into our public no, this, black no, this show. Great. Mason, way. Mason, Mason Jones. There Mason it is. Jones. Mason. It's good. This is good. Mason. Mason oh, Jones. He'll save the day. 
Yeah. No, it's very good. <laughs> Terrific. This was this was high quality radio here. Oh, hey, hopefully man. Chris. <laughs> hey, Chris Duarte. Like, uh, you can't get any scoring off the bench. Throw Chris Duarte in. Like, you no, can't go not. another game. No, I'm. I'm. No. I'm, what's Chris just Duarte going to do? Just play. Her. I don't just know, man. Kevin but Herter you can't. Play. No, no, no. I don't, I'm not saying over Kevin Herter. I'm saying, like, look, if you can't get more than three points out of everyone not named Malik Monk off your bench, you got to find points somewhere. That's uh, like, and I well, was like, go ahead. Throw, probably throw more likely, probably more likely we see Alex Lynn tonight like for Alex. a more sustained period of time than we did last night. Oh, totally. No, no. We'll see Alex Lynn tonight against Jokic. Um, you didn't see Alex Lynn because you know you can't really run him out there. Well, we'll only play two minutes, and it was like, well, we don't need to do this. And also, let's point out that the Kings completely fell apart when Demontis Sabonis tried to catch his breath for a couple of minutes. Mm. Yeah. You talk about the center of an offense. Good lord, they died last night. All right, we're leaving. This, Science. This, I'm. I'm, <laughs> I'm a, I don't know if I'm gonna be in a better mood. I'll be in a different mood tomorrow. Hopefully different the mood. Did job, man. The uh, same only better. How about that? Yeah, it's the same only better. Yeah, there you go. We are uh, headed over to 1025 to do some giveaways here in this four o'clock hour. Come check us out if you'd like. Uh, we're gonna run it back next here on ESPN 1320. And of course, we got the purple and black. It's just such a great name. The purple, purple and black, black pregame, pre-game show. show. Yeah, it rolls right off the tongue. What time is that? 5 30. Be there. Very good. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m beginning with the insiders on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. Vamos, Kings, light the beam. We still love you.